been committed. A man beat. The first officers to arrive, too late to catch the criminal, have protected the crime scene and called for medical aid. The officer in charge of the investigation gets an initial report from a patrolman already on the scene. He then directs the officer to accompany the victim to collect and preserve any physical evidence on his person and to make a record of any statement he might make upon regaining consciousness. Another officer is directed to protect the outside area. After finishing inside, the investigative team will move out here to continue their search for evidence. But the crime was committed inside, and that's where the search began. The scene of the crime. Who was in this room? What happened? The evidence found here may provide the answers. Later in court, the evidence will be needed to prove the truth of these answers. It is essential that one man be in charge of the investigation. He makes sure that all areas are covered properly and completely. One of the first steps is to take a photograph of the crime scene before the search begins. The officer in charge makes a preliminary survey of the scene to determine the objectives of the search. In almost every crime, the perpetrator either takes something identifiable with him or leaves something at the scene to identify him. Success in finding this evidence depends not only on the investigative team's thoroughness and attention to detail, but also on planning before the search is started. His preliminary survey completed, the officer in charge assigns tasks to the other officers. To be effective, the search must be well planned according to a particular system. The system varies according to the situation. In this search of a motel room, the officer in charge may assign the furniture to one officer, the floor, walls and ceiling to another or he may divide the room and assign each half to one officer. Assignment of specific search zones assures that each will be completely covered, that nothing will be overlooked. Regardless of the system used, the search team, as a first step, photographs and lifts fingerprints and shoe prints from all obvious places. This prevents their inadvertent contamination during the later detailed search. The room's dimensions and the location of each piece of evidence are recorded in a crime scene sketch as the search proceeds. It is important that each man understands his assignment and what he is looking for. In this case, complete details of the assault, clues to the identity of the assailant, and perhaps evidence of another crime. The investigators move slowly, careful not to disturb any evidence. Using common sense, they proceed in an orderly sequence to ensure that no piece of evidence is lost or contaminated in the search for additional evidence. After it is photographed, each piece of evidence is entered in a detailed log and properly identified and preserved. Identification by two officers assures a complete and accurate record. In addition to obvious objects of evidence, the investigators search for photographs, bills, receipts, letters, notes, tools, clothing, and additional finger and shoe prints anything that may lead to the solution of the crime.
latent prints may have been left in several places. The team collects and preserves obvious small objects which may have prints. And they don't overlook paper surfaces and cigarette butts. Evidence may be found in many places. The contents of a trash basket are collected. The investigator examines each item to look for some obvious clue, such as a name or phone number, before wrapping up the contents. Phone books, magazines, and newspapers may yield clues. Evidence may be found under, slipped between, inside, stuck to, on top of, hanging from, behind any object in the room. As the search continues, more details are added to the crime scene sketch. Persons in the room during the crime may have come in contact with the bedspread and left clothing fibers, hair, or other material on it. The bedspread is preserved as evidence. For this, investigators use a crime scene kit properly prepared ahead of time with equipment such as notebooks, measuring tape, fingerprint kit, plaster of Paris, containers, labels, and marking pens. All the materials needed to identify and preserve physical evidence. Two officers identify and mark each piece of evidence, if possible directly on the evidence. Later in the courtroom, successful prosecution of the case may depend heavily on this important work at the crime scene. No matter how carefully and exhaustively the investigators conduct the search, it is possible that some piece of evidence has escaped their eyes. To assure complete and thorough coverage, the officer in charge switches assignments so that each zone is searched twice. If the search has been conducted properly and thoroughly, the team will have all the facts needed to reconstruct the scene of the crime. And they will take with them all the evidence at the scene that may lead to the solution of the crime and apprehension of the criminal. Crimes are committed in rooms, stores, streets, banks, in woods, on ships, in the city, and in the country, anywhere that people can go. Attention car 883. Investigate possible hit and run. Two miles north, intersection of State 116 and Norwood Road. 10-4. When the first officer reaches the scene of the crime, he gives first aid to injured persons or determines, if possible, if death has occurred. He keeps unauthorized persons away and takes immediate steps to preserve the original condition of the scene. Traffic is routed either away from or around the scene. search team arrives, the officer in charge takes immediate command and quickly assesses the situation.
Death has been determined. The body is photographed in its original position before it is removed from the scene. One officer is detailed to interview persons present at the scene. He records each person's name and address and everything he saw, heard, and did at the scene. The officer in charge instructs the ambulance driver to proceed carefully so that he does not disturb any evidence on the ground. The victim's clothes may contain important evidence. Therefore, he sends one of his men with the body to take custody of clothes and personal effects for laboratory analysis. In an outdoor search, the search pattern should fit the type of crime and the terrain. The pattern also depends on what kind of evidence is being looked for and how many men are available for the search. In an open field with one main piece of evidence, like a safe, a circular pattern spiraling out from the main evidence in a search for other clues and the direction of flight would be suitable, but not in a hit and run case. The grid, or double strip pattern covers the same search area twice, first in one direction and then in the other. This pattern is good for large square areas, but not here. In this case, evidence may be strewn for quite a distance down the road, and the officer in charge selects a strip pattern. The strip pattern provides a close and complete one-time search of a large rectangular area. String is laid out to mark search lanes. Again, a crime scene sketch is needed to relate the details into a composite picture. During the actual search, investigators look particularly for broken glass, tire and shoe prints, paint chips, dirt clods broken loose from the car, and any other evidence left behind by the car and its driver. The team has only one chance to search, and it is careful to find and collect everything that might be significant. What appears meaningless today may be relevant tomorrow. The search team proceeds slowly, side by side, until a piece of evidence is found. The finder announces his discovery, and the search halts until the evidence is cared for. Each piece of evidence is reported to the officer in charge as he coordinates the search procedure. It is not enough to find and photograph evidence at the crime scene. The evidence must be carefully collected and maintained, protected from damage and contamination, and cared for so that the chain of evidence is preserved. Only then will it stand up in court. Each piece of evidence is identified and marked by at least two officers. Measurements are another important part of the record of evidence. Each measurement is verified by one other officer. 38 feet, 11 inches. As each area is searched, the officer in charge moves ahead to plan the next step. Fresh tire marks indicate that the hit and run driver knew he hit something. It appears that he stopped by the roadside, came back for a look, then took off. But he left signs of his presence. Tire prints are as distinctive and unique as fingerprints. In court, a plaster cast of a tire print can be identified with a tire that made the print and positively place the tire at the scene. Shoe prints are also lifted with a plaster cast. Again, two officers identify the evidence and mark it directly on the cast before it hardens. Two more items in the growing record of evidence. Some evidence reveals its story only in the crime laboratory. Paint smears may identify the make and year of the car. Finally, the bicycle itself is identified 
so that it too becomes admissible evidence. The search is over. Using proper procedures in a well-planned and coordinated search, the investigative team has found, identified, and preserved every bit of evidence at the crime scene, evidence which may lead to the driver of the car. Any successful crime scene search assumes that the perpetrator has either taken something away or left something behind, which may lead to his identification. Whatever he touches, wherever he steps, whatever he leaves behind can serve as a silent witness against him. A carefully planned and properly conducted crime scene search will find, identify, and preserve every piece of evidence before it is removed from the scene. Some evidence may be sent to the FBI laboratory to reveal its full story under the scientific examinations conducted there. Because it was properly handled at the crime scene, it remains uncompromised, part of the chain of evidence. It is legally admissible in court and may be used to support the expert testimony of FBI laboratory special agents. These are the silent witnesses that lead to the criminal and to his conviction. Gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant guilty as charged. 